In this video, we want to take a look at the insert part feature and how it can be used for multi-body part modeling. In this example, we'll look at bringing an insert into a part that would be injection molded. Uh, let's suppose I have this design done up to the stage that I need to bring in some kind of insert that this would be molded around. Or it could be a pressed in fastener or something like that. Rather than putting it together in an assembly, where then I need to go in and apply the cuts the, to, to represent the mating surfaces on this part, I can go to my insert pull down menu and insert a part within a part. So this is useful for a variety of situations. In this case, I'll browse out for the insert. This could be a purchased part or a imported model that was saved into a SOLIDWORKS part file. We can reference certain configurations if we have those. And then when I click open, we'll see a preview of the part file on the screen. And we can choose some options. Now, if I click somewhere on the screen, it's gonna actually place it there, just like in an assembly. But if I scroll down it and cl just click the check mark, it will place in on its own origin and we can choose what we want to bring over. So we can bring solid bodies, surface bodies, also planes and sketches. I'll clear part material here, but I'll bring over the uh, original body material. We have an option to locate the part if you're not so lucky like this, where the part was already modeled in the correct position. And we can control whether or not we maintain an active association or link to the original part. I'm going to choose to also propagate the visual properties or appearances from the original part. And then when I click the check mark, we'll see I'm put into the move copy body tool, which could be used to translate or rotate the part into its correct position or in the constraints mode to essentially mate it into position within the part file. And we have another video on how to use the move copy part tool that's linked in the description below. I'm just going to X out of it because mine's already in the position I want. And you can see we have our inserted part here inside our part file. And this will be represented as two different solid bodies. I already labeled one body as the base part. And we can see the inserted part here. You can always select a solid body and hit F2 on the keyboard to rename it. Now I can clean up my tree a little bit if I want to by selecting the first set of features and adding those to a folder. And then now we can see this inserted part. As of SOLIDWORKS 2019, we have the capability to do interference detection in a multi-body part. So this works out great for this workflow. We can see where and how much interference there is. And now I can continue to add features on top of this part. So for instance, I could create a sketch on my front plane, activate a section view, and then I could start cutting away the material with maybe a revolved cut to trace over this profile, create a mating surface. However, if I just want to directly subtract out the interfering geometry, there are some easier ways I can do that. So one would be to use the combine subtract operation, which is known as a Boolean type modeling operation. I can access this by selecting both the bodies and right clicking and choosing combine. And then I want to make sure that I'm on the mode subtract, that I have the base part selected as the main body and the bodies to combine or subtract as the threaded insert. So if I click show preview, you'll see that that will subtract out the body underneath. Now, depending on what you're doing, you could also scale up that body before performing this. However, uh, this accomplished the goal of designing the base part, for instance. But what if we wanted to keep the threaded fastener there? Because that's going to be, in the end, this is going to be like one purchased part from the vendor. Um, so the combine feature happens to consume the body when it's on the subtract mode. So a way you could accommodate this is if we just rolled back up above the combine feature. And then I went to my pull down menus and went to insert features and that move copy body that we were talking about before 
And I can use it on the uh, translate rotate mode. I can just select the body and choose copy. And this will essentially copy the body in place. So then when I click the check mark, it's going to say, hey, you're not translating or rotating. Are you sure you want to do this? Just say yes. And we essentially now at this stage, we have three bodies. Now, one of them is the copy. And when I scroll down, it's actually the original that's getting consumed. So this next step isn't really necessary, but just to but just to make a little bit cleaner of a model, I'm going to edit the combine feature again and make sure that instead of referencing the original insert that I brought in, it's going to reference the copied insert. So it will consume that one. Okay, then we're left with our nice appearances here. So now we should have no interferences. And if we were to do a section view, we can see all the geometry in there. Now, a couple other notes. Right now, we're maintaining an active reference to this insert. So I have the ability to right click on that insert and edit it in context, which will basically pop open the original file. And then you could, for instance, make some changes. So maybe we'll increase the unthreaded portion here. And also let's create another instance of this groove. Now, when I save the part, if I switch back to my model where they're combined, we'll see that I have a rebuild icon and I can rebuild the part file and we'll see those updates take place. So even if I cross section, I now have these two grooves inside there, which you can probably see better if I change my model display. Now, if you ever don't want to maintain that linking, the insert part feature can accommodate this. We can right click it, go to external references. And if we were to lock these references, that would temporarily freeze them. So the part doesn't update. If we were to break them by default, that would just turn this into a solid body so it would have no feature intelligence on the insert but it would be a static copy of the original solid body that we inserted if we check this checkbox for include original features and then we break we can actually insert the original parts feature history so it warns me that we're going to break the external references we won't be able to activate them anymore and you can't undo this <laughs> So if we click OK and close, we'll see that we've actually got all the individual features of that inserted part propagated through to this part and our downstream operations are still working. Note that dissolving the inserted part like this won't always work flawlessly and depending on how the different parts were modeled, you may need to go back in and edit sketches or replace references. So we can't go back to the way it was with the live link anymore, but we've permanently broken it and also copied the intelligence into this model with dimensions and, and everything. So we should be able to make changes and have these all update. One final note is that individual bodies in SOLIDWORKS do allow having materials defined. So this enables things like getting accurate mass properties for the total part. So hopefully you can see how the insert part command is very valuable for basic multi-body modeling. And again, if you need to be referencing many part files, then in-context assembly editing is likely a better solution. And there'll be a video on that also in the description. Hopefully you found this video helpful and let us know what type of content you'd like to see next in the comments section below.